So the first question that I wanna answer is, is Google Ads even necessary? So when it comes to driving traffic, to your online business, there's two main ways that you can do it. You could do it through paid ads or you could do it through organic traffic. And when it comes to using paid ads, there's so many different ways that you could do it. You can either use Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Instagram ads, Bing ads. There's so many different advertising methods that you can use when it comes to driving traffic to your website. But a lot of people are not aware of the fact that you can also get organic customers to your website as well. You don't necessarily need to use paid ads. So when I first started my Shopify business many years ago, I focused on learning everything that I possibly could about Google ads, as well as learning everything about SEO. And if you've never heard of SEO before. SEO is search engine optimization and that's basically what you do on the back end of your website when it comes to ranking on Google. So for example, let me jump in right now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I've just jumped onto Google and I've typed in beach chair. So this section right here is Google ads, specifically Google shopping ads. You can see it says ads right there. So all of these different companies have paid for their products to be shown at the top of Google whenever a potential customer types in beach chair. If we scroll down here, this section right here is also Google ads and these companies have paid for their websites to be showcased right here. And these ads are called Google search ads. But if I just scroll down right here, all of these companies right here haven't necessarily paid any money to Google for their websites to be shown right here. What these companies are doing for them to get organic traffic to their websites is with SEO. And the way that they're doing that is by placing keywords within the actual website. As you can see right there, it says beach chair. Again, it says beach chair, beach chair. So they're placing keywords in the back end of their website so that Google knows exactly how to rank their website whenever someone types in that specific keyword. So for anyone out there that's wondering whether or not they should go down the route of doing organic traffic or whether they should do paid ads with Google ads. I believe that you should do both. I think it's a wise idea for you to focus on rising in the Google search results organically. But at the same time, I do believe that every single e-commerce business should be using some form of paid ads. And the reason for this is because it's gonna be easier for you to scale. If you're relying on organic traffic, you're gonna get some sales coming through the door, but you're not gonna be able to scale your sales as easily as what you'll be able to do with paid ads. The next thing that you need to consider if you are looking to use Google ads for your Shopify business or your e-commerce business in general, is to make sure that you have a firm understanding about negative keywords. So what exactly are negative keywords? This is gonna be a list of keywords that you're gonna to give to Google. And you're basically telling Google that you don't want your campaign to show for these specific keywords. The reason why it's very important for you to do this is because you don't wanna waste your budget on keywords that don't necessarily relate to your product. So just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, sticking with the example of beach chair, let's say if I was a customer that was looking to buy a beach chair, I've come to Google, I've typed it in. The next thing that I might do is click on the shopping tab right there. And all of these different products are currently being advertised by various different sellers all around the world. And the way that it works is that when a customer now clicks on any one of these images because they want to get a little bit more information about the product, you want to make sure that the keyword that the customer's typed in relates to your product because as soon as a customer now clicks on your image, you're going to get charged an advertising fee straight away. So even if the customer doesn't necessarily buy your item, once they click on your picture, you're going to get charged a fee. So you want to make sure that Google isn't showing your product to customers that you know are not likely to buy your item because it's going to be a waste of money. So if we look at this product right here, I've typed in beach chair. Now I'm not sure if this seller wants this product to show for customers that are looking for beach chairs because it's unlikely that someone that's typed in beach chair into Google is gonna buy this umbrella. So this particular seller might want to add the word beach chair into their negative keyword list in their campaign. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so I've just jumped into one of my campaigns and I'm on the negative keyword section. And the way that you add a keyword is that you just type it in right here. So for example, if I just type in beach chair, just like that. And let's say for example, the beach chair that I'm selling is blue. I don't have any other colors. I might want to type in red beach chair and I'm sure that you guys get the idea now but I'm basically going to come to the back end of my Google account and type in all of the keywords that I don't want to show up for the product that I'm selling. So right now you're probably asking yourself but Sam how do I know which keywords potential customers are typing into Google that's triggering one of my campaigns and it's causing me to get charged? Well the way that you find out is by going onto your Google account go to the keyword section on the left hand side just like this click on it you're going to see search terms just like that click on that and then what you need to do next is click on download and then download it as Excel and once you've done all of that you're going to see a spreadsheet that looks very similar to this so in this column right here these are all the keywords that people tapped into google that caused your campaign to get triggered and this is how much it cost you and this is how many conversions the specific keyword got so one of the first things that i like to look out for once i've got this spreadsheet open is the search term i like to make sure that the specific keyword that was searched for relates to the product that i'm selling so straight away i can see 
that there's beach table right here. So let's say for example, I'm not selling any beach tables. I don't want to get charged an ad fee from Google for people that are looking for beach tables. And I can already see that it's got 232 clicks. So the first thing that I'm gonna do once I see something like this, if I'm not selling any beach tables, I'm gonna copy that and paste it into my negative keyword list that I already showed you earlier. Now I'm sure that this goes without saying as to why this is very important for you to be aware of. If you are considering to use Google ads because you don't wanna get charged for keywords that people are typing in for a product that you don't necessarily sell because all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna run through your daily ad budget when you don't necessarily need to. In addition to making sure that you're regularly adding all the negative keywords that don't relate to your product on a weekly basis, you also need to make sure that you're regularly optimizing your campaigns as well. Now there's various different ways that you can optimize a Google ad campaign. One of the main ways that I like to do it is by increasing the budget on high performing products and excluding any products from the campaign that are not necessarily doing well. Now this obviously only relates to you if you're selling multiple different products, but even if you're only selling one or two products, it's still important for you to make sure that you're monitoring your Google ad campaign on a regular basis. And this could be done by you just checking the conversion rate as well as double checking the ROAS, making sure that you're getting a return on your ad spend. And if you notice that the conversion rate is dropping slightly, you need to go into your campaign and make any necessary changes. And for anyone that hasn't actually started running Google Shopping ads yet, but is considering it, bear in mind that this is gonna turn into somewhat of a part-time job. There's some weeks that I spend hours going through all of the search terms and adding some keywords to the negative keyword list, as well as going in there and making any minor changes to my campaign. And this is something that you need to be aware of beforehand so that you can create time for it in your schedule, or maybe you can outsource it to someone else. And one of the final things that I wish I knew before I actually started using Google ads is that it's definitely something that requires some sort of skill. It's not something that you should just jump into straight away. You need to either do a lot of research on YouTube, you know, watch a lot of tutorials so that you have a firm understanding of what you're doing because you don't want to either lose a lot of money when it comes to running your campaigns or you don't want to end up being discouraged because I do believe that Google shopping ads and Google ads in general is a great way to drive traffic to your website. The main reason being is because Google doesn't give an advertising account to everybody. You need to make sure that you're doing specific things on the back end of your website so that you can get approved for a Google ads account. You also need to make sure that you've set up conversion tracking on the back end of your website so that you're able to see exactly how many conversions you're getting so you're able to see exactly what search terms are being searched that are triggering your campaign. There's so many small details that you need to be aware of and if you don't know all of these details before you get into it you're going to either waste money or you're going to waste your time and that's the reason why I've created Project Shopify where I break down step by step how you can get started on Shopify as a beginner and everything you need to know about getting your Google Ads account approved and how to set up your first Google shopping campaign, what you need to do when it comes to optimizing your campaign, everything you need to know as a beginner if you are looking to use Google Ads with your Shopify business. I wish I had some sort of course or some sort of mentor that could have walked me through step by step what I need to be aware of because if I had that maybe I would have spent £40,000 on ads instead of £60,000 because I would have been able to save a lot of money when it came to optimizing my ads. So if you want a more detailed step by step understanding of what you need to know when it comes to setting up your Shopify account as well as your Google Ads account you can check that out at shopifyproject.com or you can click the first link in the description down below and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to press the like button don't forget to subscribe down below hit the bell notification and if you want to watch another youtube video that i made not too long ago where i broke down everything you need to know step by step when it comes to setting up your first google shopping ad campaign you can click right there all right guys i'll see you on the next one make sure you stay safe out there peace